All right, so today we're talking about the dark web, and this is a presentation I always enjoy giving, so uh, I hope you can sit back and enjoy. All right, so we'll cover a couple things in this presentation. First, I'll go over a couple definitions. Uh, I'll go over some use cases into using the dark web. I'll cover some background technology, and then we'll hop into a demo. Alright, so let's define a few things so that we're not confused by terminology. Oftentimes we think of the internet as a collection of web servers, uh, but it's a little more complicated than that. The websites we access day to day are referred to as the clearnet. Uh, these websites are publicly accessible, typically via TCP over IP and indexed by search engines. Uh, the deep web isn't extremely important to the topics we're covering today, but I've heard people use it synonymously with the dark web, so I just want to explain that real quick. The deep web is actually data generated by the clearnet, things like transaction logs, registration databases, uh, data that is needed for the clearnet to function, but not publicly accessible. The dark web, like the clearnet, is actually just a network of servers hosting data with users accessing the data via requests. The main difference between the two being how the requests travel through the network. The clearnet uses asymmetric encryption to encode the packets between the source and destination server. But the requests travel through so many routers until it reaches its destination, so all of the routers it passes through can see at least the metadata of all of the requests. The router the request is passing through can't look at the data itself because it's encrypted, but it'll be able to see the source and destination. The dark web uses asymmetric encryption to encode packets between every hop in a request. I'll explain that in a little more detail once we get to overlay networks. To sum it up, the clearnet is partially encrypted, publicly available. The deep web is a collection of data that the clearnet either generates or uses for its services. The dark web is a fully encrypted network not publicly available. The dark web really has two main use cases. So there is the criminal aspect to the dark web, and that's a really interesting side. I'll definitely be sharing that side in the demo, and we'll be able to see a few illegal marketplaces that sell drugs, guns, and other services. But then there's another use case for the dark web, and that's really the freedom of speech side. The dark web is a place where people can anonymously share thought and engage in conversations with ideas that society might not want us to engage in. A lot of people use the dark web because it's really the last place for unmoderated discussion. That's sort of the drawback to using the clearnet. The companies hosting civil discord are biased in the conversations that they allow. So an overlay network is a network that runs on top of the internet protocol. Right, so things like VPN still uses IP, but it has some extra stuff that extends its capability. I mentioned earlier that the clearnet and the dark web were really similar. That's because they're both overlay networks that run on top of IP. Even though they have a very similar purpose, they do have different features, and thus their functionality looks quite a bit different. It's important to think of the dark web as an overlay network because it is a service. We'll be looking at the Tor network, but there are other networks that provide very similar features. I suppose a lot of the larger criminal organizations have created their own variants of overlay networks to remain completely hidden from the public eye. So I've mentioned it a few times and I'm sure you've been wondering what it is. Tor is a browser that allows you to access the dark web, specifically the dark web that utilizes onion routing. Onion routing is the concept of creating asymmetric encryption between each hop of the request. If you think about a request like an onion, the onion travels from router to router, and in the very middle of the onion is the body of the request. Every time the onion reaches a new router, a layer is stripped away. This process continues until the onion reaches its final destination. It implies that no machine can ever know both the source and destination of the request, thus your traffic is anonymous. That's the simplified version of onion routing. It's a really interesting technology developed by the US Naval Defense Program and DARPA. Onion routing was originally created to use for foreign intelligence communication, but it was eventually released in 2002. I'd also just like to mention Tails as an option for you to use if you decide to access the dark web. Tails is a live operating system, which means you can put the operating system on a USB stick or DVD and boot it into just about any computer. It leaves no trace on your laptop and computer and everything is deleted to the factory setting every time you restart the device. With that said, let's jump over into the demo. 
So I have Tor open and running in a couple different browsers. I just wanted to get the websites ready so we can just click through them. The reason I do that is I'll just click one of these. It takes forever, right, with the extra security and encryption uh, protocols. That was actually pretty quick. But some of them are, are slower, some of them are that speed. Uh, but let me just talk a little bit about Tor real quick and about this interface. So uh, you can see here the website that I'm at is using a dot .onion uh, address. The hidden wiki or the idea of these hidden wikis are that they're volunteer run, right? And they have a bunch of these different links to other websites and services on the dark web. Uh, this is the, I think it's the official hidden wiki. And the only reason I say official is because I think it's the first hidden wiki. But there are many other uh, listings very similar to this. This is actually a pretty PG-13 version. So let's look at the first category I've set up here, uh, which is just a bunch of different stores that I have opened. And this category is all about drugs. So I'll start with cannabis here. Uh, this is a cannabis store shipping from the USA with two different types of cannabis and pretty limited uh, variety of quantity. You'll notice, of course, everything, pretty much everything, I think, is sold using Bitcoin. Moving on, we have some other cannabis stores. I think this one is centered out of the Netherlands. Yep. And uh, this has quite a variety of different kinds and quantities. Uh, you get the general idea of that. I'll go to one more here about uh, cannabis. This is Die Dope, uh, which is a German weed store. You got to give them some, some uh, points there for creativity. Uh, and it's always interesting to see, you know, some of the different selling points that they use. Of course, everyone's concerned about the packaging, uh, you know, quick, quick shipping, two day shipping. <laughs> these, these last couple websites are fairly small, right? They, they have a small number of different products that they have, you know, in comparison to some of the different online stores, I guess. Uh, but the the reason is they've likely figured out a way to package this with uh, a high level uh, certainty that they can get this through the authorities of which you know they're they're shipping through. So um, for a lot of these stores, it can get quite difficult to start shipping huge quantities or. Uh, you know, even the difference between cannabis and, and cocaine, maybe they ship differently, maybe they ship the same. But a lot of these stores will restrict their product selection to just a couple different um, drugs. And I think that is because, you know, as I said, the, the packaging, it becomes a little more difficult. But also, the more you sell, the bigger you become a target. And, uh, Here's an example of a site that's been seized, and this happens all the time. You know, it's an example of many similar websites that get shut down all the time. Uh, this one I thought was interesting, though, because it, it mentioned the United States Postal Inspection Service, which, uh, you know, for these, com or for the, I almost call them companies, but, you know, they're criminal organizations, criminal enterprises. They act a lot like companies but they package their stuff and send it straight through the mail. Now, since the United States Postal Service gets so much mail, especially nowadays, quite difficult to look at all the packages. Of course, that's next to impossible, but even looking at 5% of the packages uh, is quite a feat when you're looking at millions of packages sent through uh, distribution hubs every day. Uh, so that's how a lot of these companies or a lot of these criminal organizations, there I did it again, uh, that's how a lot of these criminal organizations get their stuff through. Anyway, that's enough about packaging and drugs. Uh, so here we are sort of graduating from cannabis to brain magic psychedelics. This has some LSD, DMT. I'm not even going to try and say that because I'm going to sound a little foolish. 
Uh, Bit Pharma, though, I, I think that's a clever name as well, as opposed to Big Pharma. They have actually quite a big uh, variety of products. They have cocaine, speed, crystal meth, MDMA, some different psychedelics, LSD, DMT, ketamine, prescription, Viagra, Cialis, uh, Xanax, Tromadel, Oxycontin. So they really do have quite a variety of different uh, of different drugs. I wouldn't be surprised though if the government shut that website down pretty soon. I mean, that's that's the thing about uh, the more products you sell, the bigger target you become. This is the People's Drug Store. This has been around for a long time. This one I thought was interesting, the Tom and Jerry store, so that might be a little bit of a copyright infringement, but they are selling high quality cocaine, 90%, and it's free shipping. This one we have pure Afghan heroin. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the commercial services. I think I have that open in this tab. So some of the different commercial services, uh, of course in America it's a little easier to obtain firearms, but in Europe it's quite a different process. And so you have uh, some markets that are selling a couple different guns. Um, I'll keep it moving here. We have some counterfeit bills, and uh, this is for euros. Um, looks like they're advertising that it is... Uh, on cotton based paper passes the different UV tests and um, yeah I mean 120 times 50 is 6,000 I think somewhere in that neighborhood and uh, it's only gonna cost you 850 bucks 850 euro I should say so moving on here, this is the card shop that are selling uh, credit cards. Some of these go up to 20000 I guess that's where all the stolen mail goes. Um, maybe, actually, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure a p portion of it is for, from uh, stolen mail. But anyway, um, but I'll keep it moving. Then we have... Uh, lot of different services for identity creating passports IDs birth certificates driver's licenses these I think are pretty European specific uh, but well I guess they are selling a Canadian passport um, but there certainly are uh, websites with uh, American identity documents as well here we have a UK passport um, but I'll keep it moving here we have uh, dark web hackers so of course there's the whole hacker for hire uh, model yeah it looks like both there's multiple people here and these hackers are advertising a couple different services so let's look at some of these remote control of a phone of someone else most new models supported, so $700 to control someone's phone. Uh, Facebook, Twitter hacking, um, other social network account hacks, Reddit, Instagram. Instagram cheaper than Facebook, $50 cheaper. That's, that's interesting. Um, oh, full package deal. Get access to personal or company devices and accounts. So I mean, I, there's quite a quite a variety of uh, services. This person is uh, very much into um, pretty direct attack vectors. Let's take a look at George. Uh, let's let's look at Vladimir's. Uh, bio actually so it looks like expertise is in programming yeah it's sort of a, a little more of a direct attack vector so interesting so let's look at some of the different things yeah it looks like 
spreading false information about someone on social media. Oh man, that's that's funny. Thirty days full service. I will work eight hours per day for thirty days, only on your project. So those are sort of my illegal um, categories. I want to just briefly talk about some of the other things. The idea that knowledge should be free. And that's sort of what drew me originally to the dark web. And, you know, the only reason I really have any interest in it now. Here's a, a library of a bunch of different publications, books, uh, in the form of PDFs that people have publicly shared here. Let's see if uh, one of these will load. You can see how long some of the different web requests take. Uh, that's why I had all these uh, websites set up earlier. But while that loads, I'll just take a look at some of these other ones. This is a web uh, radio streaming service. So you could take a look at some of the different things that people are listening to. I think most of these for the, yeah, for the most part, I think they're playing music, but there certainly are, I think some talk radio and, uh, maybe some podcast type. Oh, here's, uh, info war, info wars, <laughs> Alex Jones. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean, you know, just a another type of thing. Might not be a huge deal for us in the United States, but you can see for someone, for example, in a very uh, restricted country, North Korea, parts of China, where they want to understand what's going on in the rest of the world, this could be a really useful thing. But this website doesn't have a lot of super interesting uh, radio stations. But I'll move on. This is actually what I kind of wanted to talk about was uh, uh, different forums that you'll find. They discuss some of the different problems we're uh, facing in society, but they also talk about different ways to navigate through the dark web. So sort of your one-stop shop for a lot of this stuff. Um, I'll mention now, uh, you might see some interesting or uh, rather questionable conversations. I don't claim to take any responsibility for those, but nonetheless, it looks like, uh, oh, I'm on the scams and scammers page, so I'll go to the main page and take a look at some of those. Uh, while that loads, uh, I'll go back to the uh, library page here, and you can see we have all these different documents and stuff that are available. So yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, that, that's the basic idea. You know, we have a lot more of these forums, but it's not super interesting to show you all. Once you've seen one, you've sort of seen them all, but that's the basic idea. What's up, everyone? Thanks for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to follow us on social media to get the latest news updates.